This is getting out of hand. Hi, I'm Steph, and I love to read and review and analyze otherworldly books. Today I wanted to talk about some of my priority reads, or maybe I should let you all tell me what my priority reads should be, but I'm going to show you some of the books that are on my TBR card. If you're new to bookish content, TBR just means to be read. I don't really buy a lot of books these days, so just about everything on here was gifted to me, and there are a mix of final copies and ARCs, advanced reader copies. I also get books from my local library, so I keep sort of a virtual TBR in my head that I pull from when I request books from them. But today I'm going to show you some of my physical books. I'm very excited to talk about Solace. This one's coming out in October of this year. It takes place in 2033, so it's near future, but it's very dystopian. There are these massive effects of climate change in action, and the planet is dying, and the government is in this global race to find clean water. Undocumented migrants are sort of the first casualties of this war. They're people who are targeted, and they're thrown into labor camps to search for valuable minerals. And when they're too sick to keep digging, to keep doing physical labor, they're medically experimented on to try to figure out how to make it rain. Our main character is 17-year-old Rania and her girlfriend Jess, who are both prisoners in this camp. And there's another perspective of a soldier who has a taste for vengeance. This book is about resistance and resilience and how kindness can be revolutionary. It looks haunting, but I also think it's meant to be optimistic. I got this signed and bound manuscript for Death of the Author, and I could not be more excited. This is about a disabled Nigerian-American woman. She's planning to be a writer, and she's writing a book. But then in the middle of her sister's wedding, she has this absolutely terrible day. She's fired from her job and her novel is kind of turned upside down. So she starts shaking everything in her life up completely and starts writing this brand new book from scratch about what's like really in her heart and it turns into this epic sci-fi piece. There's androids and AI and human civilization is dead and the book ends up making her into a star first of all and then also like changing the future in space. So it's got all these real elements and these surreal elements and it's supposed to be very very meta. It's all about the power of storytelling and identity and community and what it means to risk everything to be heard. And this is coming out January 2025. Tale of the Flying Forest is a middle grade book, which I actually don't read a lot of, so I'm really excited. I think this is going to be super sweet. It's described as a spellbinding and lyrical Jewish Narnia for a new age. It's written by R.M. Romero, who is such a talented writer. I've read their young adult books, The Ghosts of Rose Hill and Death's Country. So we're following an 11 year old who is obsessed with her book of fairy tales, especially after her mom dies and her dad is sort of distant. Then this raven shows up and tells her that she has this long lost twin brother and that everything in the book of fairy tales is real. But her brother is being imprisoned by this villain and the villain is someone that she used to think of as a hero. So she's got to sort of step into this world and find her power and lean on her Jewish faith to save the day. I think this is going to be absolutely wonderful and it's coming out at the end of October. I'm so excited about We Came to Welcome You because I'm always down for some new spooky reads, especially as the weather gets colder. This one is coming out at the end of September. It's a suburban horror novel and it's described as the other black girl meets Midsommar. I love a psychological thriller, especially one that creeps into social horror. So we're following this married lesbian couple who moves into a gated community that slowly gets creepier and creepier. The neighbors are a bit overly friendly and the homeowners association is very, very pushy. And then things start happening inside their house, like doors and stairs are moving and disappearing and roots are growing. And then they find an old journal from a resident who went missing that I guess could explain some of these things. It's got a lot of dark humor, which I love, and it explores assimilating in order to survive. And it also asks the question, is it really survival if you're no longer your true self? Sounds fascinating, right? And I love the little tagline, become a good neighbor or die. Dragon Rider is already out, so if you're interested in this one, you're in luck. I just have an art copy because a, I'm very behind on my reading, and B, I love to hold on to art copies because I prefer not reading heavy hardcover books. Anyway, this book follows an orphan who is now living as a royal hostage. His dad led a failed rebellion and he ended up being executed by the emperor. The emperor's son and this other princess have this arranged marriage and the princess ends up coming to the castle and she brings dragons with her. In this world, you have to do something called soul bonding with the dragon in order to draw on their power and their strength. And of course, the main character ends up with a story stolen dragon hatchling and then escapes with a handmaiden. He's got to bond with his dragon if he has any chance of returning safely to his homeland and also kind of leading a revolution. And he might want to seek some revenge too. This says book one, so I'm not quite sure how long of a series it's going to be, but I just know that it is the first. I'm excited to check it out. Same situation with Rake's Fall. This one is an art copy, but it's already out. This is a standalone science fiction piece. I'm pretty sure this was pitched to me as for fans of This Is How You Lose the Time War. I don't see it on there now, but I'm pretty sure it was. And that's one of my favorite 
favorite books, so obviously I was very excited to read this one. It's supposed to be very weird, very creative storytelling. It's about these two children who meet in the middle of this Sri Lankan civil war, and then they witness or take part in this like terrible act of violence that links their souls together forever. So then we're sort of hopping through timelines as they escape from various oppressors, and they keep reincarnating farther and farther into the future. It looks absolutely wild and very confusing, but in the best of ways. Where are you? Aha! I have this absolutely adorable edition of The Baker Thief from Rainbow Crate, which I've been holding on to for so long. Like, look at those cute little edges. I don't actually know a ton about this one, but I know it's some sort of cozy fantasy. So there's this baker who is also a thief, and every night she goes out and she tries to steal these very valuable red gems. She's trying to investigate her missing sister, but then one of the people who she steals from, she runs into again and again and again, and their relationship sort of deepens and gets more and more complicated. This has some arrow ace rep, there's a bi-gender character, an aromantic character, a demisexual character, and I think a sort of slow burn enemies to lovers plotline. Let me show off the back too. Back around. The Dead Take the A Train is a library book, so I definitely plan on reading this one soon. It's described as a mix of cosmic horror and gritty fantasy, and it's actually co-written, which I didn't realize when I placed the hold. I just knew that Cassandra Ka had written it, and I really love their book, The Salt Grows Heavy, so I was super excited. Anyway, it follows this totally burnt out 30 year old in NYC. She's trying to establish herself in the like underground magic scene so she'll take any gig no matter how gross or dark or weird or messed up it is. But then her best friend shows up at her door and asks for help, and she sets off this wild chain of events that might just put the entire world in danger. This looks absolutely wacky and I'm so excited to experience it. May a Divine Awaken was gifted to me by the author so it feels extra personal and I'm very excited to read it. This is an epic fantasy book. The main character Marcus has vitiligo and he was shunned by his parents in the village and kind of just abandoned by everyone. He's desperate to prove himself however he can, and so he joins the military. Except then his life turns completely upside down when assassins attack his village. So now he's on this quest of revenge, and he ends up meeting up with this queen who tells him that his skin condition is actually a signifier that he has this like locked up power. She says that she'll train him how to use it if he joins the war against the divines. The divines are basically superhumans who have wild amounts of power, and they can like manipulate the elements and the earth. And then things get messy because he uncovers the truth behind the assassin's attack and he doesn't know who to trust or who he's gonna have to betray. The plot sounds incredibly creative and I'm so excited to dive in. Also this cover is so soft. I don't know what it's called, like what these types of covers are called, but I get so excited when I get one. It's hard to say which bindery book I'm most excited for, but House of Frank is definitely up there. This book and all four of the first bindery books are coming out on the same day in October, which is gonna be so fun. And if you're one of my bindery subscribers, I can give you a special discount code for the exclusive bindery hardcover like special edition, which is beautiful. It looks so cool. And that goes for all four of them. They all have special editions. But let me tell you about this one. It's described as a journey with grief, but also as a warm and whimsical hug. So our main character is a powerless witch whose sister has recently died. And she goes to plant her remains at the very famous Ash Gardens. When she goes there, she meets the garden's caretaker, who's this like mythical beast named Frank, and she ends up taking a job there to also become a caretaker. Basically, she's just taking the job so that she can put off having to say a final goodbye to her sister and she slowly learns a lot more about the place and about the whimsical staff. So she starts off in sort of devastation and grief, but then slowly she finds this big found family and she unlocks her joy again. Just reading the synopsis gives me goosebumps, so I know this is going to be a very beautiful, very heartfelt, very lovely story. I do have five more priority reads to tell you about, but in order to hear those, you're going to have to go to my bindery. If you're new to bindery, they're the publisher that's putting out House of Frank and the three other books this fall. They're sort of like a bookish Patreon, so I host a exclusive content there, and you can support me and get access to the content for just $5 a month. Also, by joining my bindery, you get access to my lovely community and my Discord and book clubs and meetings and beyond. And if my community gets big enough and engaged enough, I have the chance to start my own publishing imprint and publish my own books. So if you vibe with me and you like my book taste and you want more, please come join my bindery, which is called Celestial. Thanks everyone, head to Celestial for part two, and see you next time.